Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. This is Horcrux. Thank you for tuning in. If you clicked on this video, then you obviously will learn how to aim like a pro. Now, me being pretty old, I got 20 years on the sticks, been goaded since Halo. I have a lot of experience, and this is just isn't just a, I'll show you my sensitivities is this is it this is the best setting type of video it's, it's much much more than that what I'm going to teach you in this video is not only applicable to a spell break but it's applicable to really any game you play now I'm not going to go through this in like a one two three four five step step kind of setting I'm pretty much winging it no script I'm um, just kind of on the fly here but the one the main thing you want uh, when you're in aiming in any video game uh, you need to identify what type of aiming you are you know for example you track do you flick or do you do a little bit of both? The best players do a little bit of both. Now, what do I mean by that? Tracking. Tracking is, let's say you have a moving target and you're able to keep your crosshair perfectly centered on them. Now, flicking, which is mostly you know my play style, is that your crosshair does not necessarily have to be on the target at all times. You're able to finally correct your aim very, very quickly. And this is really good for you know those high sensitivity players such as myself. On Call of Duty, I'll play on max sensitivity. You know, I'm either quick scoping or I'm using a slug shotty. Really like the fast pace of the game. Now, uh, with that being said, depending on your play style, in Spellbreak, for example, I like the whole shotgun rocket launcher scenarios. You know, for example, I like the Toxicologist. I like the Pyromancer. It's builds of being up in your face and personal. Now, if you're using a controller on PC or just controller in general. I will tell you if you are on PC, I'm not sure how it is on console, you have little to no aim assist. Look at this. It does not slow down. We're going to the same speed. You know, aim assist typically slows your crosshair down. There's little to no aim assist on this game, which is okay. This for once not having much aim assist on using controller is okay because every spell in this game will auto attack rather is a projectile so you do not have to exactly be pinpoint accurate with your aiming and that's the beauty of being able to actually use a controller you know for example I can just click like this I don't have to necessarily be 100% accurate because if you are you know this person moving pretty far away these projectiles just aren't going to get to them in time so you always have to kind of lead your shots so um, with that out of the way now sensitivity is a big deal. Some people will like playing middle row sensitivity. Some people like playing low sensitivities. There's different types of sensitivity functions. For example, there's linear, which is a raw input type of aiming system. There is a dual zone, uh, which is not in this game, unfortunately. It's kind of a combination of linear and exponential. And of course, the third is exponential. Now, if you're playing on high sensitivities, uh, I'll just go ahead and show you uh, my sensitivities here real quick, just so you have uh, some sort of reference. I'll play at max sensitivity, obviously. So it's very, very important for me. If I want to fine tune my aiming, I need to have an exponential sort of aiming graph. Uh, I think it's in advanced, yeah. So. Um, the difference uh, between the two, between a linear and exponential, linear, like I said, is raw input. You barely move your stick, it's going to go the same speed no matter what. Now, it, that's in linear. Now, in exponential, you slowly move your stick, it slowly ramps up. And then the more you flick your stick, the faster it goes. Now, you can play around with the advanced settings to get this exactly correct. You know, there's, there's ramp up times, there's boost times. I wouldn't really worry about any of that. The main point of this is... Either if you're playing on linear sensitivity or a linear type of aiming curve, you need to have a lower sensitivity just because it's a raw input function. And then if you're playing exponential, you can get away with having a higher sensitivity, which is what I like to do. You know, I like to be able to be accurate when I need to be at long range, but I also like to be able to flick like crazy when um, I'm up close range. Now, uh, some other things to note. I'll just go back to the sensitivity here in spell break. Um, your, your zoom scale factor, naturally, you'll want this much lower if your sensitivities are higher, and vice versa. Rumble strength, keep this as low as you can because this is really, really annoying. Having this up to 10, it, like this shit literally vibrates off my desk, it's retarded. I've had it happen at 5 as well, so either a 1 or 2, or just turn it completely off. I keep it at 2 just because it helps me kind of keep track of my flicks and my aiming. I can kind of get a rhythm in my head and feel it in my hands. You know, for example, 
you know, this is as fast as you can fire the fireballs um, without fervor. You know, fervor further increases it. When it vibrates, it helps me keep track of that without actually having to visually look at my animations or whatnot. So um, it is actually a, a kind of a helpful setting. Um, HUD scaling, you don't have to worry about HUD scaling. Just go with the default. None of this really makes or breaks your game in, in spell break, to be honest. So um, the main thing to, to take away is you need to identify you know, just what type of aim is good for you. Like I said, I like the flick. I like the high sensitivities. You know, that's that's just me. Um, it takes time uh, to get the muscle memory for flicking, for tracking in any video game. It just takes time. This is a very vertical game. What I mean by vertical is it, it's not boots on ground like Call of Duty. Okay, it's not like left or right, maybe a little bit up. You know, in case the guys like on a cliff or whatever. This game is super up, super down super all around so the next tip I would suggest to you guys it's kinda dumb but if you wanna get really get good at this game and actually dedicate time into it because I do predict this game is just not gonna blow up overnight like Fortnite did it is gonna take time for this game to ramp up but when it does I think it's really really gonna take off um, kinda like an exponential curve you know like I was talking about earlier but uh, so if you want to dedicate the time now it dedicates you know the practice you know, in the fine tuning now, I think it's really going to pay off later, especially in the competitive scene. I think this is going to be a really, really, um, I'm not going to say esports by no means, but I do know it's going to be a very competitive game. I actually have to adjust my dead zones. That's another thing. Let me talk to you about dead zones real quick. Uh, that's very important. I cannot believe I forgot to mention it. Now, I just got done playing around with this, and uh, you can kind of see here, uh, my dude's kind of moving without me doing anything. Hold on. Well, he was. R regardless you get the point that's not good so what you want to do is you want to kind of leave your controller the way it is kind of barely flick it up down left to right and just see in its native state does your character move does it do any functions um, if it doesn't do anything in its innate state then your dead zones are pretty locked into place however if your dude's moving or whatever you need to increase your dead zones uh, this is just uh, just a little bit of raw uh, tolerance in your sticks. Uh, it varies from controller to controller about uh, you know what's you know the the input uh, to the actual controller itself. If I can find it here, so dead zones um, 11 is obviously too low. You saw my dude moving on his own, so I want to move these up to 20. Ideally, you want these as close as to zero as possible. Um, this is an Elite 2 Series gaming controller, $200, probably one of the best controllers on the market, and it's still almost impossible to attain a 0% dead zone, okay? So, right now, I'm barely flicking the analog, it's not moving, that's good. Now, the question is, if I push on it, if I f feel a little bit of resistance, is it moving? See, right now, I feel a little bit of resistance, it's not moving, that's not good. So that means I over calibrated the, the dead zone. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my dead zone settings. So 20 is too high, I'll move this down to 15. Okay. Now, I'm gonna barely move, my controller's not moving in a native state. I'm gonna barely move my stick. As soon as I feel any resistance and it's moving, this feels good. This feels like it's calibrated pretty well. Okay. And, you know, like I said, this is just got a little bit of practice. Controllers are different. The manufacturers are different. But dead zones do play a small pivotal role in uh, your overall aiming spell break. Any game, for that matter. Most people don't really pay attention to the dead zones. But um, it actually does um, make a break in those really high, intense situations where you know where you're kind of freaking out and you really, really need to land your shots. So, um, uh, back to what I was saying earlier. Um, why even bring up uh, the Elite 2 Series controller? Spellbreak, if you are playing on a stock controller, you know, for example, out of the box with no paddles, you are at such a disadvantage, especially if you're crossplay playing on PC, because you're just so limited to what you can do. For example, by default, if you want to loot, okay, you your loot button by default is, squ uh, is square X, you know, whatever you want to call it. So you literally have to take your finger off the controller to loot, then go back. That is time wasted. 
So if you have it on a mapped on a paddle, for example, I can move around and loot at the same time. And that really, really helps, uh, you know, when you're trying to get like a, a quick uh, swap or, a, you know, gauntlet swap or rune swap or, or what have you. Also, the jump button. The jump button by default is on A. That's not good because uh, unless you play Claw, you do not need to be playing Claw. You're going to have a carpal tunnel by the time you're 25. Trust me, I know from experience playing Claw is such a serious health hazard. It really is, guys. But having your jump or your glide button on a paddle is probably the most pay to win feature that there is with a paddle. Uh, you only really need two paddles to play this game. The the looting and also the uh, the gliding while in air. It's so pivotal for you to have complete control when you're in the air and be able to flick and look around at the same time. Y you just have to have it. Like, for example, you know, if default is A, there's no way you can glide and aim at the same time. You know, unless you're you're playing claw course, which you should never do. And also, if you do have more than two paddles, have your rune as well. Uh, you know, especially for you know, like pyromancer and the dash. So the dash actually changes direction as you go. So even though you click it this way, you can still turn and carry that momentum. You know, when you're doing the uh, the Timmy torpedo or firefly or just you know any dash through you know like a a tempest tornado or whatever. So. Um, Moral of the story is, guys, you need to find something that suits your playstyle. In Spellbreak, I like playing up close and personal, so therefore I have to have a higher sensitivity to track people. If they're jumping over top of me and around me, I need to be able to quickly flick, look behind me, look up, look down. Now, if you're playing something kind of like an ice class, you know, kind of a pokey class from the back, naturally you want lower sensitivities because your aim is coming from a fine tune, so you can just track easier. So, number one, identify your play style, whether you'll play up close or far away. Number two, you need to figure out whether you like to track more, you like to flick more, or you like to do both, you know, kind of equally. All right, uh, some of the best players do both. You know, uh, I'm more of a flicker myself. Uh, high risk, high reward, you know, type of thing. Uh, number three, you need to... I'm, I'm just going to rank this up there. You, you need to have a good controller to play spell break competitively, or... Uh, in any, if you're going to take this game seriously, you need a good controller, you need paddles. I'm going to rank that number three, and last but not least, it's very important for you to find a sensitivity, especially um, with your controller's dead zones and the aiming curve, uh, I think it's called linear exponential. Um, I'll reiterate, lower sensitivities, linear would be more suitable for you guys, higher sensitivity, you want exponential. So. I tried to keep it short and sweet. Sorry for a little bit of rambles uh, in and out. Um, why you should listen to me? I used to play with Nate Shot. I used you know, back in the day on Halo. You know, before he was well known. I barely had internet connection at the time. I sure as hell didn't stream. But back in the day, me and him used to go hard. Um, I really haven't done anything competitive since, besides Call of Duty. I've been in Seattle a couple of times, but I did pursue my endeavors in uh, mechanical engineering instead of opting for the gaming route, which in hindsight was a terrible mistake on my part because this is what I'm super passionate about and what I'm doing now is kind of meh. Pays the bills uh, pretty handsomely, but I'd much rather be a content creator or a competitive gamer by nature. So. Um, with all that being said, guys, thank you for tuning in to the channel. Please consider giving the channel a uh, like or sub. Um, if you like ESO, if you like Destiny, if you like Call of Duty, if you like Overwatch, I play literally everything. Anything and everything. I would like to be a variety streamer one day, so please sub, hit the little notification bell if you want to be tuned in for my streams. I do upload most of the VODs, so you can go back and kind of watch those, watch me rage, watch how I fuck up <laughs> quite often. I'm, I'm a rager at times, but sometimes I'm a pretty chill dude. have some really awesome conversations with chat, so I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. Deuces.